Hi students, today we are going to see on the topic Pit and Fisher Sealant. Myself, Dr. Lubna Fatima, Senior Lecturer, Department of Public Health. Now these are the contents I am going to cover in Pit and Fisher Sealant. First, I will be giving a brief introduction, definition of pit and pits and fissures, then moving on to fissure sealant, morphology, history of pit and fissure sealant, classification of sealant, indication, contraindication, techniques of sealant placement. Now, what is the definition of pits? Pits are nothing but small pinpoint depressions located at the junction of the developmental grooves or the terminal of those grooves. This definition was given by Ash and Nelson. This Ash and Nelson will be one of your viva question. If you tell the definition of pits, we'll ask which author gave it. It's Ash and Nelson. Now, next moving on to fissure. Fissures are nothing but deep clefts between adjoining cusps. This occurs on occlusal surface of the molars and premolars with configuration that are difficult to access from the surface. This is a definition given by Orbins. So remember, pit definition was given by Ash and Nelson. Fisher's definition was given by Orbin. Now next, moving on to the pit and fissure sealant. So it's nothing but a material. So the definition goes by a fissure sealant is a material that is placed in the pits and fissures of the teeth in order to prevent or arrest the development of dental caries. So why this pit and fissure sealant is used is just we are going to arrest the dental caries. This is one of the preventive procedures. Now tell me what are the other preventive procedures we use in our dentistry? It's nothing but a traumatic restorative technique which is called as ART, PRRR, preventive resin restoration and a tropical fluid application which will give 1.23% APF gel. Okay. So this definition of fissure sealant was given by European Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. So remember students, pit and fissure sealant is a preventive procedure. Moving on to the morphology of pit and fissures, Nagano in 1961 described the following principle types of fissures based on the alphabetical description of the shape. It's V shape, U shape, I K shape, inverted Y, I type and fissure system. So in the middle is the fissure system, how the exactly the fissures goes on. So now let me tell you which is actually a caries prone type. So caries prone type is nothing but which one? I type are caries susceptible type. Whereas V type and U type are caries resistant type. So remember this, okay? And the percentage, this might be asked in your neat question. So V type is present approximately in 30 to 35 percent of the individuals whereas ik type is present in 24 to 26 percent of the individual and i type is present in 18 to 20 percent of the individuals and inverted y type is present in 5 to 10 percent of the individual so remember these percentage just for a neat purpose but in our exam it's enough if you write what are the types and which is caries resistant and caries susceptible okay remember that now next is the history of fluorides. In 1905, Miller used silver nitrate. So the first, the evolution of pitin fissure sealant was from the Miller in 1905, which used the silver nitrate. And in 1923, it was Hayat prophylactic odontomy. 1929, Bodecta gave fissure radiation. 1955, Bonacore gave acid etching. So in 1962, it was this GMA resin, which was given by Bowen and Associates. Here you have to particularly remember the prophylactic odontomy which was given by Hayat in 1923 and Bodecter 1929 which gave fissure eradication. Okay. So next moving on the classification of sealant material. We classify the sealant material based on resin based sealant, glass ionomer sealant, polyacid modified resin sealant. And based on the resin based sealant we classify into four types based on the curing light. So first is the first generation which is UV light which is of 350 nanometer. Second generation is self cure with tertiary amine as activator. Third generation is visible light of 470 nanometers. When you go with the range it is 430 to 490 nanometers. Fourth generation is fluoride releasing. Important generation fluoride releasing is one of the most commonly used generation because it actually fluoride is one of the anti caries act property it has. So fourth generation is a very good system to use. Okay, but we commonly use third generation also. Next is based on the fillers, it is classified as filled and unfilled. Based on the translucency, it is classified as opaque and transparent. Just a recap of uh, whatever we have taught. First, we are going to classify it as resin based sealant, which is transparent and opaque. And here it goes on for the ultraviolet light polymerizing agent. 
ऑटो पॉलीमराइजिंग लाइट पॉलीमराइजिंग फ्लोराइड रिलीजिंग एंड फिल्ड एंड सेमी फिल्ड इज बेस्ड ऑन द फिलर पार्टिकल्स ग्लास आइनोम सीमेंट यू वी कैसीफाइड इन टू कन्वेंशनल ग्लास आइनोम सीमेंट एंड रेजिन ग्लास आइनोम सीमेंट नेक्स्ट इज द पॉली एसिड मॉडिफाइड रेजिन सीलेंट्स सो दिस इज द मेन क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फिटन फिशर सीलेंट्स एंड वी ऑल्सो सॉ द टाइप्स ओके आई नेक्स्ट वॉट इज द इंडिकेशन ऑफ दिस फिटन फिशर सीलेंट नाउ डिपिंग ऑन एज थ्री टू फोर इयर्स ऑफ एज फॉर अ प्राइमरी मोला सीलेंट दिस एप्लीकेशन कैन बी गिवेन और Six to seven years of age when the first permanent molar is erupted, you can give this potential sealant. Eleven to thirteen years of age for the second permanent molar and premolar, you can give. Children and young people with medical, physical, and intellectual impairment with high caries risk. Children and young people with signs of higher caries activity and coming from non-fluid area. These potential sealants are indicated. So always remember for a newly erupted teeth. Okay, newly erupted teeth. This potential sealant is one of the indicators. Uh, next moving to the contraindication contraindication is shallow pit and fissure sealant this is contraindicated open occlusal caries region with extension into dentin your pit and fissure sealant is contraindicated presence of large occlusal restoration presence of proximal caries extending on to the occlusal surface partially erupted tooth and uncooperative children so you avoid this pit and fissure sealant next is the technique of fissure sealant i'll be telling one by one what are the steps involved in the pit and fissure sealant first make sure that you polish the tooth surface before you start your pitting fissure sealant in what you polish you polish with your pumice buds okay so make sure that you polish your next is the isolation and dry the tooth surface before you start your pitting fissure sealant for every success of the treatment your isolation plays a very major role so before doing any treatment first isolate and dry the tooth next is acid acid etching we all know that we use 37% of orthophosphoric acid remember this uh, students if it's less than 30% what will be formed and if it's more than 50% what will be formed if it's less than 30% dicalcium phosphate dihydrate is formed and if it's more than uh, 50% monocalcium phosphate monohydrate is formed so remember this in orthophosphoric acid this is one of the most important thing and here is 20 seconds of the acid etching you will be doing in your pit and fissure sealant and make sure that you remove your slime layer while doing an acid etching these are the key points to remember while doing fissure sealant now washing and drying so washing and drying wash for 30 seconds okay then dry it for 15 seconds remember these two co codes wash for 30 seconds and after that dry it for 15 seconds now what do you see after acid acid etching you see a white frosty appearance if you see this white frosty appearance then there is a success in your etching if this white frosty appearance not seen then repeat your etching again remember this white frosty appearance is an important step for etching if this seen only your etching is success next is again isolation and dry the tooth sir and bond bonding which i have mentioned in the peak in the slide okay now next we will go to sealant placement so remember in mandibular teeth apply the sealant distally so you are going to apply distally in the mandibular teeth and allow it to flow mesially with the convex being true for the maxillary teeth during the application of sealant care should definitely be taken to prevent incorporation of the air bubble what happens if the air bubble gets involved definitely your potential sealant might be a failure it might come out so remember you should do without incorporating the air bubbles curing so curing should be done in 30 seconds remember curing will be done in 30 seconds now next after placing the pitting fissure sealant you are going to evaluate with the high points and overhangings so after you have finished the restoration of pitting fissure sealant just tell the patient to bite and see whether there are high points if there are high points reduce it if not it's perfect no no it's not a problem and make sure that there should be no overhangings overhangings may cause more contra uh, contraindication to the patient and more caries you will be prone that to to the caries so remember this if overhanging and high points are being present you are inducing the patient to more caries so remember these two things next is just a quick revision of whatever we saw what we saw first we saw the history in that miller in 1905 was the starting point of our history of pitting fissure sealant then in 1923 it was haya and in 1929 it was who oh, fissure eradication so given by bodecker so remember this then we moved to u type v type ik type and then based on the curing light we classified into four types uv visible light chemical curing and fluoride releasing so we saw 2 nanometers what are they 350 nanometers and 400 to 490 nanometers and fourth generation is fluoride releasing which is commonly used so remember all these key points for an pitting fissure sealant